Today I'm talking all about swarm trapping, how I put my traps out, what I put in the box, and what I use, and where I set the traps. I hope this video will give you a good base start to making your own traps and being successful in trapping some free bees. So where do we start? Well, I think we'll start where I left off with my previous video about talking about my uh, great mentor who's now passed away, Charles Basso. And I did mention in that video about uh, how he taught me to catch swarms. So I thought while I was fresh in my mind being talking about it, I would run through what I do. Now, first of all, fundamentally, I want to say outright that I'm not trying to belittle anybody in what they've done because a lot of people have done videos on swarm traps. I just want to show you my take on my swarm trapping and how I do it. So first of all, I'll say two things. One, there's a great video on a channel on YouTube called learningbeekeeping.com or I think it's Out of a Blue Sky by, um, by McCartney Taylor, I think his name is. He did a really good video on swarm trapping and making swarm traps and um, also a little bit on bee lining in another video. Now, um, I use that as my base to learn from when I started and a lot of other people, as I said before, have done videos since, but his one really typifies what the basic things you need to do. So the other thing I wanted to mention was if you want to learn about bees, get this book by Professor Tom Seeley. It's a fantastic book. It's called Following the Wild Bees and it's all about bee lining and how you can, if you want to, find bee nests. This to me is really only a tool because I don't actually do the process of bee lining, but it's like what I would call underpinning knowledge. It's really good to know about all this because if you understand how to track bees down, then you can find out where to put your swarm traps, if you know what I mean. So one of the first questions I get asked is why put out swarm traps? Why waste your time putting boxes in people's gardens is what I used to be asked. And the reason why is free bees. But now I don't actually trap bees. The reason is because the amount of time it took me, the amount of resources it took, it's far easier for me to make bees from the bees I have for several reasons. Now I'm going to try and explain all this. Basically, swarm trapping is a thing you do when you have no bees. And it's great fun because you learn a craft and you learn about bees by doing it. And you learn, it's a, it's a fantastic way of learning the whole um, thing about swarming and swarms. When I first started, I had no bees at all, apart from the three that you've seen I, I bought. I had three colonies that I ended up with after the first year. One of the colonies swarmed, and the other two were the ones I bought. So I ended up with three colonies. And from then on, I used to scratch my head and go, right, so next year, obviously those bees are gonna divide into two, they're gonna swarm and give me honey, and then as that autumn winter progressed and I started thinking about it, I started thinking, well, obviously, I'm beginning to learn a bit about bees now. So if, I, if my bees do swarm, is there a chance I'll lose my honey crop? Now, don't get me wrong, my honey crop wasn't important to me, but I was thinking laterally, trying to think, how can I make, how can I get more bees? So I went back to Charles and he told me, well, you put out swarm traps. And obviously by this time, I'd sussed out that's what he's doing. So I went and learned how he did his. One fundamental thing you have to realise when you're going to be putting out swarm traps is they need a commitment. And you can't, say for instance you catch a swarm, you can't just go and get that swarm in three o'clock in the afternoon because the bees are going to be foraging. And two things come out of this is one, you end up working really late, and two, the, the speed the bees build up when a swarm goes into a box is incredible. So. As you probably know, they are monster comb builders when they're in swarm mode because they know they've got to get that comb built. They want to get that queen laying as quick as possible. So that is why I don't trap swarms anymore. Well, wild swarms. So what I do instead is I use my swarm traps uh, in and around my apiaries to hopefully catch swarms that might come from my own bees as a form of protection. And also as a marker, as, a, as to know that, for instance, if I see bees taking a great interest in 
one of my swarm traps either in my apiary or 150 to 200 meters away from my apiary, I know that there's the possibility that one of my colonies is gonna swarm. Now, it's only an indication, but it's another tool I can use for swarm traps. So obviously, I've got lots of boxes now, and I use them where I can. So the, the other reason why I put a swarm trap in my apiary is because often a swarm will come in from outside. It doesn't matter if you have colony next to colony next to colony. As far as the bees are concerned, if there's a swarm trap that is available and it's just correctly baited and it's all right and, and some scout bees find it, they may well come to, they will, may well come to that but they're more than likely to come from it from a place more than 150 to 200 meters away. Biologically, bees are programmed to go away from their colony when they leave the nest. They'll swarm and they'll hang on a tree quite close, which is when we like, we obviously mostly see swarms because they come out of a nest, a chimney, a tree uh, or, or a hive and they hang on the tree and while the scout bees are going off to find out places to go to and then report back by doing their waggle dance and all that other information they pass on, we then hopefully come along and go, oh no, my bees are swarmed, but they're still there, they're still hanging in the tree. So we shake them into a box and everything calms down and usually they accept the box we give them because it's got comb in, that we give them a feed and everything's happy days because the bees have suddenly got what they need, but they've, done, they've gone through that swarming process. That queen has issued, um, the queen cells in the colony have probably hatched out and there's a number of virgins in that swarm, but overall everything is really fine because the bees have done that. One of the beauties of having swarm traps near your apiary is that um, it's a sign and also it gives you a chance to, to, it's another tool in case you have bees swarming. So that's some of the obvious benefits of having free bees. Um, the reason, the other reason why I don't trap anymore specifically is because of the time it takes. Now, when you become a professional beekeeper, if you've ever, in a video I did that says, uh, hunt, it's called hunting the swarm, you can imagine, and I've spoken about this before, the time it takes to be up late, to drive somewhere, to collect a swarm off of a wall that might be heavy, which probably usually is, late at night, and swarm season is basically long days. So after you've spent all day in your apiaries working, you have to then go out and collect a swarm in that's in a box, because if you don't go at the right time, most of the bees will be out foraging, and that's what I'm on about. You are better off, once you have bees, making bees from your bees. The other reason is, a lot of people talk about the disease risk of catching swarms. Now to this day, I can hand on heart say I've never ever had an issue where I've seen disease that's a problem, that's a, like a brood disease, in a swarm that I've caught. I get um, chalk brood very often in the AMM, in the Apis mellifera, mellifera that flies around here, the local black bees. Every time I catch a swarm, usually I see chalk brood within three or four weeks of that colony forming. So usually I requeen it. But overall, I've never ever seen any brood diseases in any of the swarms I caught. And I don't treat with antibiotics because it's illegal and I, don't, I think it's fundamentally wrong. Um, I, believe in, I believe that some things like a shook swarm is, is, a right, is a good thing to do in the right scenario. If you have, for instance, European fowl brood, because it does exactly what a swarm does. It, renews the comb and just lets the colony take over in, in fresh comb, as a swarm would do. So by, do, by allowing bees to swarm and by catching bees, in some respects, it is a good control for problems. And we all know that the theory behind the Varroa control, that if you either cage your queen and get the brood break or, or, or give them an artificial swarm, it's a way of managing, um, it's a way of managing Varroa. I don't particularly do that, but it's, what I'm saying is I'm not blind to it and I understand that because it's, it's, it's how the bees work. My also, my theory is if a colony has been able to get to the point where it needs to swarm, it's usually two reasons. One, the colony is congested and it's really strong and it's spring and there's loads of food coming. And so why wouldn't that queen be healthy? There is also the theory that bees swarm because they're ill and they want to move out of the, the colony they're in. But it might just be that the, the colony, the, the nest they're in is very small, so they can't ever get bigger than a certain amount. So they're constantly churning out swarms, maybe two or three times a year. I've seen nests I've found in, in trees that are very, very small. So it's not surprising you get small swarms with, with a mated queen in. All I'm saying is it's very variable. And with swarm trapping, you have to be open-minded and take what you get. I would say 80% of the colonies I catch are good and are strong because 
I believe they've got to that point, but they've sworn because the colony was strong, not because they were diseased. The other ones I, I have caught, um, I found that often a queen has sworn because she's in her second or third or maybe even her fourth year. And that's one of the reasons why queens swarm, is because the older they get, the more likely they are to swarm. So when you get sometimes a, a colony arriving at a swarm trap, it might draw up two or three or four frames and suddenly you'll look at it the week later and there's just queen cells all over the place because that queen has died. She gave up the goat just because she was exhausted and worn out. So she managed to get to a colony, start laying and a few days after she started laying, the, um, she, she basically died. And then emergency cells are made and I've seen this probably in 20% of the colonies I used to catch. So just to refresh that part there, the, there's nothing wrong with catching wild swarms, as far as I'm concerned. And if you've, got, if you've got the time and you've got the resources, then you need to learn how to put out swarm traps because it's fun and you really enjoy it. And there's nothing better when you're a, a, a debut beekeeper uh, or you, you just want to have maybe 10 or 15 or 20 hives. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing a fantastically healthy swarm going into a colony and it just exploding in that comb. And you look at it, you pick up the comb and it's all full of nectar and the smell is absolutely gorgeous and there's a beautiful queen. And to see that queen, to me it was always the thrill of when you pick out that frame and there was that queen who managed to come from another nest somewhere along, a long way away, reduce down in size, fly with all the other bees and land on that box and, and accepted that box and she's gone in there and she started laying and it's just absolutely fantastic to see that. But in reality for me now, as I said before, I just can't spare the time to do that because I can make colonies a lot quicker and a lot more effectively and with the genetics I would perhaps prefer, now I'm, now I'm more set up with, my own, uh, with, my, with much more bees and resources to, to pull from. And that doesn't mean I don't keep a swarm I might catch in one of my swarm traps that I put in my apiary or near my apiary to hopefully catch swarms from my own bees. I will keep that, but I'll probably requeen it. Um, it's just the way it works and when you become a professional you realise the time it takes is you just don't have enough time because you never have enough time anyway and to go into a, an apiary where you've got 20 hives you can make 20 swarms or 20 nukes we would say but we, in France they call it swarms you can make 20 swarms in a morning and you go make 20 in the afternoon or maybe more than that if you're organised but that's how efficient it is and then you put them down somewhere else you give them a queen and they're done you don't have to worry about coming back to them uh, the day after and all this kind of stuff or to take them off the wall at night. You must understand is that when you put a swarm trapping box on a wall that's high, it might be so easy to get it up there, but believe you me, when a good sized swarm moves in and they work on that box for no more than two or three days in peak, in peak mid spring to summer, that box is full in five days and you can hardly lift it off. And what you have to do is you have to put it over your shoulder with bees all over you and you have to come down inch by inch because I've done it and I tell you it is the most dangerous thing. So beware please, that is so difficult to do. So the question is what actually is a swarm trap? Well to me I've thought about this and all I can come up with it, it, it is a box or a cavity that bees like to swarm to and it can be anything. It can be something that you've made or something that nature's made. That's why bees go into chimneys, that's why bees go into trees. It's a cavity of, the, of, of, of a said size that the bees are happy to go to. When I looked at swarm trapping, um, I was obviously presented with the swarm traps that my ex-mentor used to use. So I looked up what would be the ideal volume for a swarm trap and it turns out uh, through uh, a lot of um, studies and books you read that the ideal volume for a swarm trap is approximately 40 litres. So in America you could probably work that out, I don't know what it would be in gallons or quarts but it's a, it's a sort of certain size that is most attractive to swarms because they don't want it too big because a small swarm would really struggle. And they don't want it too small because a big swarm would be hanging out the front of the box, which sometimes it is. But I've never actually seen a swarm abscond from a box that's technically too small because I generally used to check my swarm traps quite often. I have seen them abscond from a hive. I've seen a huge swarm arrive at a hive that was set up as, a, as an empty hive just in case a swarm was there because I had nothing else in the apiary. I left an empty hive there with a few combs in. And it was so big that they basically were hanging out the front. And um, someone said to me, oh, you should have seen your bees last week. They were all over the front and they were hanging out. There was a big bubble of bees on the top. I said, you could have rung me, you know? <laughs> I would have come and sorted it out and saved the swarm absconding. But generally they don't abscond. 
So we've said that the volume is approximately, should be approximately 40 litres. It's so variable and some people like to use a, uh, an old hive. I personally think a nuke box that has five frames, whether it's Langsdorff or Daydont, it doesn't really matter. It's approximately five frames is the ideal size because bees can work on that really well. So what, what should you put in a swarm trap? What constitutes the best makeup to get those bees in there? Well, you've got to understand a little bit about the biology of bees and a little bit about why bees swarm to know what to put in it. Because when bees swarm, they're looking for a new area and they're looking for a place that's going to give them the least amount of work. So if you can present a clean box that is approximately 40 litres to a scout bee or scout bees that is the right size, smelling nice, has used comb in it that is clean and additional comb to draw up and it feels right to the bees, there's a pretty sure chance that that swarm that you're trying to attract will go to your box. Now, the other thing I didn't mention yet was the fact that if you can attract a swarm to your box, it won't hang on a tree when it leaves the hive. It'll go from the hive directly to your box. And that's one of the beauties of swarm trapping. So what does a swarm trap look like in, in my world? Well, this is a standard nuke I have. It's a standard Daydon five frame nuke. And if you want to look up how to build these, I uh, one of my first videos I ever did was how to make a dad on five frame nuke. You can Google it up or you can just put it in YouTube, Richard Noel Bees, and you'll find it. So this is one of the exact ones I used to copy off my original mentor, and it's exactly the same components in it. So I'll start at the front. On the front, we have a metal door, okay? Now the thing with swarms is I don't like to have a ventilated base on a hive that's going to be used for swarm tripping. You can put a ventilated base in and put a slate over the bottom, which is interesting because sometimes if you don't have the bottom covered, they can build out underneath, they can arrive and build underneath. But if you put, if you put a, a fixed base on it, it often gets around that problem. They all go into the hive rather than underneath it. The only problem with it, not having a ventilated base, is when you get a big swarm coming in, you have a problem because they get extremely congested extremely quickly inside the five frames, which is why I check my swarm traps often. But if they do get congested, if you come to close that swarm trap off to take it away, what I generally do is this. I either, well, I start off with the mouse guard down a little bit, so, but I like to leave it sort of halfway so that you do sometimes get mice in going into traps and chewing their way around things. But because I'm going to explain in a minute, you don't use any honey in the swarm trap, often you don't have a problem. It's, there's nothing for the mice in there. And that time of year when they're feeding, mice find plenty of food elsewhere, so they're generally not a problem. But I still leave a mouse guard down because it gives bees that feeling that the cavity they're going to is actually a nice access and fairly protected. You want it too wide open. So what I have to do is when I come at night to collect a swarm, I've got to take this off, flip it around, and then it goes back on after this way because that offers a little bit of ventilation. You see there's lots of tiny holes there and the bees will fan there. Now this isn't ideal because some of the bees do get their antennas stuck in there. But the problem is if you foam it off and it's a big colony, you haven't got long to move that colony because they will die of heat exhaustion within 20 minutes. So you've got to be on the ball. The other way is just to staple a piece of gauze on the front at night with a staple gun. You push the gauze up a bit and then you staple it on after. Because as long as you push it closed, doesn't matter how much they fret, once you've got the gauze on, they can't sting you or can't get out once the gauze is on. Staple it away, two or three staples and you're safe. And then that box is is got some ventilation on the front. That's the big thing. You have to watch the ventilation when you're collecting a swarm. So, a normal nuke, as I said, on top, I like to have a cover board, okay? And I like to have a, a piece of gaffer tape on the cover board, so if I want to feed, I've got a feeding hole. And if I want to feed it, I literally come along, take off the tape, like that, and on goes your feeder. You can give them two litres of syrup very quickly if they need it, but often they don't, okay? But I like to leave it so I can. Now, incidentally, this gaffer tape is old, but even the new one, the bees do not stick to it, so do not worry about it. I used to worry like mad. So in the box, what do you see on that lid? Old propolis. Smells fantastic. It's what the bees gunk it up with. Okay. Inside my swarm trap, I like to have a minimum of two drawn combs, okay? Now this is old comb. It looks a bit of a mess, 
but it's, and it's an old frame. But this is what you want. The whole idea is you want a box that's got old comb in it, but old clean comb with no pollen. Because if you have pollen in it, you will attract wax moth. Wax moth will home in on the pollen and they will be eating through this in no time at all. That's what I like to put in the box. So the box, before I, before I don't tell you, it, you can have two or three frames that aren't drawn up inside the box, but use vertically wired frames on the dadons if you're using dadons. Because if not, what happens is horizontally wired frames going this way, they tend to warp in the heat of the box, okay? So you need to have boxes that are fixed. Because when that swarm comes in, they will build on everything. And if the, if the, if the weather has been hot and the, the wax foundation has... Um, distorted before the cut before the swarm moves in they will make a mess of it and you'll be you'll be cutting it out so I have two or three usually two undrawn combs and when I mean um, clean combs they can be that's a, a brood nest comb but it's got a bit of drone here but that's fine um, and the other one here this hasn't actually been drawn but uh, they've glued it in so this has been almost like I would say accepted by the bees so this is also another frame that you could say is perfect for leaving in the colony okay so that's just the frames the actual condition of the box needs to be an old box okay if you can a box that has been properized now inside the top here along these edges where the frames sit we have these um we have these uh castellations in here that, that are that will, or lugs that some people call them that, that the frames sit in and behind that you get a nice place there where the bees like to put lots of propolis, leave that in. You can blow torch it all each time, you can clean it out, and actually flaming the box is said to actually also add some attractant to the box because it melts the, the wax into the, and the propolis into the wood and it almost seasons it and makes it older and more attractive to bees. The older the swarm trapping box or the older the nuke, the better the chances are. Now you could use any box and you could just put one or two frames in if you haven't got any materials, okay? And it, was, it might well still work if there's nothing else suitable for those bees to go into. And I've seen it work. But the chances are, if there's another swarm trap miles away, they will go to that one. Because so, what can you put in your swarm trap to make it even more attractive? So, obviously, you'll probably know about lemongrass oil. What I do when I bait the trap, I, I've got this trap arriving on site. I put it on its ledge or on its place where it is. I either tie it in, put a brick on top so it doesn't blow over in the wind. And then I get my lemongrass. And I literally do one, two, three, four, five drops inside. Then the lid goes on. And then I do a couple of drops, one there and one there on the front. And I rub it in with my finger. Don't worry about it if it seems too strong. It, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm not, um, I'm not saying so there's other products that don't work as well. But for me, I just prefer lemongrass. So I know the other product, Swarm Commander, is really good. And... I've tried it and it has worked, but I personally, myself, find it quite strong and you need much less of that. But I'm not sure myself whether it's the best thing for me here. I am happy at using um, lemongrass oil. The other thing I put in my swarm traps is I use these little amples of uh, Nazanoff. Now Nazanoff, as you know, is the, is the pheromone produced by bees when, they, when a swarm lands or when the bees are trying to redirect a colony to re-centralize or to move them to a new location, we have this, we have, an, uh, we have synthetic Nazanoff, okay? Which is um, available, it's about a euro, a little pipette, you can see the pipettes there. And this is called, uh, this one is actually called um, uh, Swarm Catch, it's by, it's with, with, with Nazanoff, it's a French one I've got here, but it's available on the internet, you can buy it. Um, it's, it's a really good thing, and what this does, it actually, I wouldn't say that it actually attracts them in from afar, but when they get to the point of, when they find the box through the other smells, they say that it actually gives them that final excitement and push. It's like, some of, it's like imagining some of the bees already being there fanning, saying, oh, bring the rest, bring the rest. And when the swarm arrives, they all immediately start fanning because I've, I've done other swarm transfers and I've put one of these in when they've been a bit indecisive and immediately it entices the others to carry the to carry the baton and they all start fanning. So Nazanoff is a really good thing to add because it gives them that final push and gives them that final um, like excitement that this is the way they need to go. So where do I hang the Nazanoff? It goes in here on one of my frames on a little pin. I don't know if you can see that. So I generally hang it there. And this Nazanoff will last a season. 
Okay. If, for example, you catch a swarm, you can take, you can go, open, you can lift the frame up when the swarm's just arrived because obviously they're in swarm mode. They're really lovely bees. You just lift that off, and you can put that Nazanov into another colony or into another box, ready for the next one. It's not a problem. So, it's all about presenting that box in the right place at the right time with lemongrass oil, with Nazanov, and also with old propolis, and making sure that box is smelly and odours. Smells fantastic to me now because I'm, I'm going to say that, but it, it really is a science. And once you learn about all about that, then you'll be able to put out swarm traps and collect good swarms. So you're a newbie in your second year and you haven't got the combs you want to have. So what do you do to find combs? Well, you can, you've already got wax, you can buy a foundation and you can buy frames. Yes, I know, but they're not uh, old and smelly. Um, what can you do then to uh, get a hold of someone? You can go and uh, jo join a beekeeping club and hopefully by this time you have and you can ask some beekeepers there if they'll give you a couple of combs. Most of the time, put small scale beekeepers don't have many combs spare. Uh, but if they do, you know, they're like hen's teeth really at that, at that stage in your career. I've got more than I know what to do because obviously every year I get some colonies that die out and they get robbed out before I have a chance to find them, or they just die out because they've run out of food or whatever. So in the, in the terms of a professional beekeeper's uh, resources, I always have combs if I need them, but I generally don't use them for swarm traps anymore. So you could go to a professional beekeeper and just beg them and get to know them and say, look, I really need a few combs, can you help me? And they're more than happy to sell you a couple, probably. <laughs> but anyway, what can you do then if you, if you, wanna, if you wanna make a nuke Old when you haven't got old nukes. Right, well there is a thing I did and I tried. I call it artificial propolization. And this is what I did. I'll show you these pictures which should come up about now. What I did was I went to my old beekeeping mentor. Again, I used him as a big resource and he was really fantastic. And he knew what I was trying to do because he did the same when he started. I borrowed some of his old supers, okay? And he hadn't cleaned them out very well. So what I did was I scraped them out. I gouged out the, all the propolis from inside the supers, all around the edges. And I had a, a cup full at the end, like a big, like a pot full. And what I did was I then got some, uh, some pure alcohol. I, I had to find some surgical alcohol. And you can only buy it in very small bottles because unfortunately some people tend to drink the stuff if it's pure. And you can use methylated spirits, but you have to have it pure. Methylated spirits smells. You want a solvent that's really strong that can dissolve propolis and alcohol is the best thing. So what I did was I dissolved the alcohol. So I dissolved propolis in the alcohol and it makes this fantastic sticky brown goo. And all you do is you get a brush and um, you paint it on the inside of the hives you want to make to be a swarm trap, or the, or the nukes, I should say. What you do is you paint it on the inside of the nukes. You don't have to paint it everywhere. You just put a bit along the insides here and a bit on the front and maybe a bit coming out the front here. And the whole idea is you're giving that new box a smell of propolis. And it works because it worked for me. This is how I got around the problem of how do you start? How do you get hold of of the material when you have nothing. Well, obviously, you make the nukes. Here's some nukes I made. Beautiful shiny nukes, but they're, they're too good. They might not work for years as a swarm trap. They might have done, but the chances are pretty slim. So I artificially propolize them. Now, be warned, okay? Do not do this in your best clothes, because it gets everywhere. You need to get your oldest gear on, your oldest clothes, your oldest shoes, because you get anything on your clothing, it's wrecked. The stuff stains like you wouldn't believe. You can buy indelible markers to tell you, but that propolis in alcohol will stain anything forever. So use your old clothes, do it in the garden, slosh it around. When you get residues on the bottom, just literally pour it on, poke it into holes, into gaps in the nukes, and leave it. Then leave the nukes outside in the rain if you need to for a couple of days or a few weeks. Let the air get to it, let it all dry, and let any residues from that solvent diminish. And then what I've done before is I've even gone over the inside of the, the nuke with beeswax and then I flamed it. So what you want is just to keep that mix, keep it a, a mix of things that smells attractive to bees. So that's what I did. The other thing is, what do you look for when you think you're gonna see bees coming to your swarm trap, right? Initially, you put your swarm trap up. For, for us here, traditionally, it was always the second week of April. Because really, the end of April, early May is when our swarm season starts. So you really wanna have your swarm traps up 
before that period starts. Because if you get a hot spell and there's a queen that's old or bees are already full and they're a good colony, they'll send out scout bees to start scouting around. And the scout bees will be coming back, landing on the board, going in and out. They'll be doing little semicircles around there. And if you see this with one bee, you think, well, that's interesting. If you see it with three or four bees constantly doing this, I can tell you that you're probably in the chance of a swarm coming. Within another two days, you'll probably see 15, 20 bees. And if you see that, you can have a little look inside and just check. All you'll see inside is a few bees on the frames then. There's no swarm arrived. When a swarm arrives, you will know because they'll be, they'll be, when you see it, they'll either be, if you see pollen coming in, there's a queen in there and she's laying. Because bees will not be gathering pollen for this nuke until there's a queen in there. If you just see bees coming and going, but, um, you don't see any pollen, it's pretty likely that there's a swarm in there or it's very close to a swarm arriving. It takes a few days for them to really get going. I've put swarms in boxes, uh, in hives when they've just arrived, for instance, I've seen one land and they don't actually, they might do nothing for the first day, then the next day there'll be one or two starting and then follow, then they really start going, then they'll start foraging. And the other thing I was on about is don't forget, don't leave swarms that are big in boxes for long because they will become so congested so quickly. The beauty of these swarm traps is there's no cutting out to do. Other people used to put these um, small, like, uh, what your papier mache um, uh, swarm traps out that already come baited, baited with uh, an attractant in. They're fine if you see the swarm land on the on the on the on the little papier mache device thing. But if you don't see it the, the same day, it's basically a cutout job. The beauty of having swarm traps with your own sized frames in, the ones that are compatible with everything, is everything fits. You just take out the frame and move it to a hive. I'll show you the video of that. I can, I'm doing a transfer here where I've actually had a swarm trap on this green table and it was a really good sized swarm. So all I had to do was lift, lift the, uh, the frames over from one nuke to the hive and you can see the bees are just walking in beautifully. You can actually hear my car running in the background. My kids are in the car watching it going, Oh God, Dad, hurry up, this is so boring, but because um, they're so used to it by now. But that's what I was doing, and, it, and because you've got the same frames, it's so easy to do. So then afterwards, you've got an empty box, you go back, you reload it, you put a new Nazanoff in it, and off you go again for the next swarm trap. It's all about being organised, but you can do it, and it works well. And it's free bees, and it's bees that are going to do well and help you get started in your beekeeping career if that's what you want to do. It takes time but by doing this method you really will learn a lot and you'll have a heck of a lot of fun. It will it'd be exhausting but it'll be great fun for you to do. So if you want to email me um, about any questions about the swarm trapping boxes you can go to my website on www.beesinbrittany.blogspot.com or just google, google up swarm traps, how to make them, where to place them. And you will find that leads you to my blog site where I originally did a, a, a blog about probably six to seven years ago, I think now, on originally how I made these up. There's all the details I've told you on this video in there. And I hope that that will answer most of your questions. And I'll just reiterate what I said before, is what I've shown you here is really how I do it. There's a lot of good info out there, and you go, won't go wrong by following other people's info as well. But try and be open-minded. Try and look at it in a broad sense and give yourself um, an education in why be swarm, what makes a good swarm trap, where to put your traps. One thing I wanted to add, that when, you're, um, when you've got your swarm traps out, and you decided where to place it, what you need to do every couple of weeks is rebate it a little bit. Now, I go around with my lemongrass in my truck all the time because I'm often going past. And um, the other thing I have in my truck is a feather. Now, this is actually a tawny owl feather because obviously you might know I'm quite into owls. But um, I use goose feathers if I can because they're longer and thinner. But what I do with this feather, it's a really good tool because often you'll get spider webs. If the, if the, if the swarm trap isn't occupied, you will get spider webs sometimes building uh, a little bit of a, not the big um, uh, house spiders, they'll be like garden spiders that are almost, they look like false widows or they're a little, I can't remember their names, but basically this is how you clear that. You just go along with there. And the other thing you get as well is when you get bees starting to look at the swarm traps, bees sometimes carry out bits of webbing and stuff, or they, they might take off a bit of a comb. So you just go in there with this and you just brush it off, just like that, just to sweep it out. It's, it's the simplest thing to do. 
Yeah, it keeps that swarm trap looking fresh and clean. And then you just give it a couple more drops if you think so, if you think it needs it. And then you've got um, the front is clean, it stays attractive to bees. Now, I've had swarm traps that have never worked in certain areas, so I stopped using them in that area. But for instance, I had one trap that in the third year it caught a huge swarm, and that's all I ever caught was like one, I think one swarm in four years, because obviously I put it out the next year, and then I decided not to, not to trap there anymore. But it was an ideal location, and the, the clients were really nice, and it was a really good place to, to put it. But you will find areas that are really good for swarm trapping, and you will find areas that aren't very good. And what I say to you is concentrate on the ones that are really good because they're the ones that will probably give you two or three or maybe four swarms in a year. If you see a swarm going in, have another box ready, but never put two boxes out in the same area. Okay, have at least 150 meters between each box because if you put two together, it can confuse the bees and they get false messages, okay? So how do you find places to put your swarm traps at? And what location, what position should I say, uh, should you put your swarm trap in that location you find? Well, this was a, a really interesting thing as well. So I used to go and knock on people's doors. If I found an area that was wooded and it was a nice, I used to pick a, a, a place I thought looked like they might have a bee colony nearby, near a chateau or something, or, or I knew a place that had bees in their chimney. So I'd knock on the door and ask to put a swarm trap there. And, and I met with no opposition at all. Uh, once I think, I had some person who was really worried and they were going to get stung and everything. But I found that if I spoke to them, and, and a bit like installing an apiary, I went to see them first. I um, proposed it to them in the previous autumn when I was scouting around. I'm on Google Earth looking at different places. And I went and said to them, look, um, you know I spoke to you about st sticking that swarm trap in your garden uh, last October. Is it right if I stick it in next week? And nine times out of ten, they're absolutely fine. No problems at all. And funnily enough, I think I explained before that those places I've trapped are now some of the places I, I have apiaries because I built up this rapport with people. So um, I had no problems at all finding places to trap bees. And people, to be honest, if they know you're honest in that, are quite happy to have you coming in that because often they're not there and it's another person coming past to keep an eye on things. So I could often just drive in and drive out and know nothing's happening. Or I drive in, stop and look at the trap, see if there's any swarm in it and then drive off. But there's not a problem. The other thing is, when you put your swarm trap up, first of all, think of the safety. You do not want to be trying to get a big box down from a high place. Although a nice lintel high up, so on the second story, might look really attractive to a catcher swarm, and they do work well when they're up on their own in the middle of nowhere. Just think of how you're going to get that swarm box down when it's full of bees and absolutely full to the brim. Even the first floor level, say two metres high, is a job and a half when they're heavy. Because this box, we can lift it up now, and you think, oh, that's easy. But when that box is heavy, you have to pick it up on your shoulder, like this, and you've got to come down the ladder, going down backwards one at a time, like that, and I tell you, full of bees, it's not much fun. Just be aware of that. So, in terms of aspect, I would say generally you want a south to southwest facing place to put a trap. Um, I've actually caught swarms from other people in other people's gardens arriving in all sorts of positions in all sorts of parts of the garden north south east or west it doesn't really seem to matter but if you're if you're picking somewhere out of choice you need to pick somewhere that has the sun I would say for most of the day at least a good period of the day and that gets on the front of the box the sun lifts up it heats up from the box up, the smell travels up in the air and it helps radiate that smell of the lemongrass oil and the nazanoff up into the air. And any bees coming past get excited. They also feel the box is warm, they feel that it's getting sunshine, so they think, oh, this is a good place, maybe we could go in here. And they check it out and then next thing you know, you get a swarm moving in. I can't say for sure that's the only reason why you get the swarm going in, but it's a combination of things. And I just think that if you have a box that's in the sunshine for most of the day, it's going to help you attract a swarm. I've also put them on tin roofs, on sheds, and that seems to help because the shed warms up and I think it elevates the smell of the, of the box. Um, but it all depends if there's a nest nearby that's going to give you a swarm. There's no point in having the best swarm trap in the middle of nowhere where there's absolutely no chance of a swarm issuing. You really want to locate a swarm trap in a position you think within two or three hundred metres 
or at least a kilometre where you think there might be uh, a swarm in, in, in the wood. Or even go to a beekeeper and say, look, I want to trap some swarms. Would you mind if I put some swarm traps a couple of hundred metres from your apron? And you know what? I wouldn't mind a dam because I can't stop my swarms going. And if anyone really wants to, uh, to trap a few of my swarms, I'm more than happy. Because my objective is to get to, my, get to my bees before they swarm. And if I haven't been there doing my checks, so be it. It's not ideal, but you're on good terms with the person and it's, it's good fun because, uh, you know, I don't see an issue with it. And I think anyone who's really aggressive, I, I, I disagree with someone um, coming next to my apiary and putting a swarm trap just over the fence next to the apiary. Because you know what? They're stupid anyway, because there's more chance of a swarm coming from afar to that swarm trap. Because my bees are going to go further away. They're not going to go to the swarm trap next door. But... But it's not always like that. Sometimes they have swarmed to another box in my apiary, but it doesn't happen very often. Majority of times, bees go further away. So there's a lot of information there. Uh, it's a bit long-winded, but I just wanted to describe the information I've learned over the years, and I hope it's some help, because there's all these little things. It's, with swarm trapping, it's attention to detail that gets the swarm. Absolutely attention to detail. There's nothing else you can say but that. So I hope you like the video and I hope it encourages some of you to go and put swarm traps out because it's great fun and you get free bees. See you again soon. Bye for now.